As we were going on that process walkthrough in the exploratory data analysis, we not only discovered about the process, but we also discovered something about the people who were involved in that process. And many times we call the output receiver of a process the customer. And when we talk about the customer, someone who receives the product of my work, we realize that sometimes it's the next step in the process. Sometimes it's within the factory, sometimes it's within the company, and sometimes it's an external customer. That external customer is actually paying, usually, for the goods or services that they receive. Internally, though, we don't have that financial component. So one of the things we see is that what we are giving internally is actually sort of a bartering system where we're exchanging things. I'm giving them something and then we're getting some feedback back maybe in terms of information. So what we want to do is discover who are our customers and what do they want. Well, as we're on this little journey walking through the process, we're actually talking to people, starting with the output and going backwards in the process. And as we do that, we've actually discovered much about who the customer chains are and also what their requirements are. So we want to record that particular information. So explore what was the data that the, the customers were looking for? What was the way they were making a judgment? Was this acceptable to them or not? So notice what your customers need to do their job. What is the difference between what they need and what they request? Maybe they don't understand all of the things that they actually need to do their job properly, or we see their job differently than they see their job. So we're delivering something that doesn't meet their need. How will your customers actually measure the quality of your deliverables? Do they have a different measure than you have? Have we aligned the measurement systems so we're actually talking about the same thing and we can have agreement? Well, in the project charter, there's a component that we haven't talked about yet. And this is sometimes called a stakeholder analysis. So the stakeholder analysis identifies who are the people involved in this particular process. And we use this to document who they are, their needs, and also the expectations that we have and how well we deal with those. So the information typically contains things like, what's the name of the individual or the person? What's their department or their process? What is the role that that stakeholder has in delivering your component out to the ultimate customer? What is the project support and interest that they have in terms of your particular project? Are they going to be interested in it today? Would you give them a single plus, two pluses, three pluses, or five stars? Or would you give them negatives? What do you need to have their involvement? If you take a look and somebody is actually very de de uh, dependent in terms of what your output of your process is, we may need five stars, but if we're giving them a minus or two minuses or five minuses, we have some job to do to get them involved in this process and committed to helping us move this forward because there's going to be some political conflict that exists. They don't see it as important, and you perceive it as very important that they be involved in your process. So what are the actions you're going to take to get them involved? You know, how, who's going to be reaching out to that person? Will you, as a green belt, do you need a manager? Does it have to go all the way up in the chain to the executive? So what's the approach going to be, and what's the schedule? And then what's the current status of that effort? Is it accomplishing the need to build this collaboration and participative communication that's necessary to have an inclusive solution so that the process step at the end will actually include their, their commitment to following through with implementing the, same, the change that's being recommended? So at the very beginning, if we can get these ideas understood, who is the stakeholder? What do they want? Are they participating? Are they helping? Or are they hindering us? Then let management remove the barriers that might be existing in the process. And it's best to think about these things explicitly up front, because if we get into the data analysis, if we get into the project management day to day, and we start finding these things happening, we don't want those surprises to be existing in the middle of our project, because they can stall the project in a major way to the point where the project is actually undermined and can never be successful. So again, the project charter is a very important tool in terms of the process. That's the output of what we've just talked about in terms of the define phase. It also is preparing us to enter the measure phase. All of the summary of the lessons that we've learned from the exploratory data analysis, from looking at the process, and understanding the current state 
allow us to understand then where do we drill into the measurement and create really an excellent performance baseline to know where the process really stands with a sound measurement system. That prepares us then for the next set of videos that we're going to talk about when we talk about the DMAIC measure phase.